Natural rubber comes from the milky sap of a tropical tree. Thousands of years ago, the native people of Central and South America discovered that the hardened sap was elastic and bounced. They played games with the balls of sap. When European explorers came along, it was soon a whole new ball game. Today we make thousands of useful things from the fluid that circulates through rubber trees. Everything from tires to balloons to boots. The seeds are sown on plantations like this one in Thailand. It takes several years for the rubber trees to mature. Then the sap is ready to tap. In the coolness of the morning when the sap flows freely, the farm worker slashes the bark with a hooked blade. The sap oozes from the abrasion. It spills onto a metal spout inserted below the slashed section. The spout funnels the sap into a ceramic cup below. It flows for about five or six hours, partially filling the cup. They wait a couple of days for the tree to recover and then tap another section of the tree. After straining impurities, they pour the rubber sap into a plastic tub. They add formic acid and squish it around. The acid causes the sap to coagulate. After 15 to 30 minutes, it thickens to the consistency of tofu. This tofu-like sap has a sticky structure that allows it to now be rolled out like dough. The rolling squeezes out excess water and leaves a ribbed pattern on the sheets that increases the surface area to hasten drying. Then they rinse off the formic acid. They hang the rubber sheets to dry for about five hours. As they dry, the rubber thickens and becomes stronger, and the color darkens. The coagulated rubber sap has been transformed. In a few short steps, it's gone from a liquid to a solid. Workers pile the rubber sheets onto pallets and weigh the load. There's a little over a ton and a half of rubber in this stack. They store the stacks in a warehouse until the next stage of processing. When they're ready to move on, workers peel each sheet from the stack and soak them in water for about 20 minutes. This washes away some of the surface contaminants, but not all. The rubber sheets then go into a machine with many brushes that scrub off more of the dirt. After one more rinse, the rubber sheets are squeaky clean. As you can see, the color of the rubber sheets varies somewhat, depending on the tree they came from, their thickness, and other factors. They hang the sheets on racks to drip dry. They build a fire in a brick oven and smoke the rubber sheets in a chamber overhead for five days. It's a slow, low-temperature smoking that preserves the sheets to prevent the growth of mold. After smoking, they clip out contaminants like bark or insects that have become embedded in the rubber. In many cases, they can't get it all. They grade the rubber sheets by examining them against a bright light. Sheets with fewer remaining contaminants receive a higher rating and will command a better price. They stack the sheets according to the grade. And then it's into a hydraulic baler. It presses the stack of rubber sheets into cube form. The dimensions of the cubes conform to international packaging regulations, so they'll fit neatly into containers for shipping. They spray the rubber cubes with a mix of calcium carbonate and solvent. The mixture forms a film on the cubes that prevents mold and keeps them from sticking together during transport. This rubber is now ready for the next factory and the next transformation. It could become almost anything. <laughs>